So I guess I guess we're just fighting today. I mean, no, 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 we're not fighting. You're fighting, but I kind of want to stoke those flames. I'm not. I'm not. You're. You're very. You're aware. I'm cranky. You're aware. Yes, you are. I will put on movie face for this. That's okay. I will. I will put you to bed. I will rock you to sleep. All I've been doing is drinking beer and watching the XFL and watching OKC lose to the Celtics. My man, you are while um, being a wildly disrespectful on the dealing phone. with a dealing with a breakup to nobody in particular. But I'd have you no other way. Man, I'm trying to tell you, like some assistant coaches and recruiting coordinators are just flat soft. Tell me more. Nah, I can't because I'm on the phone with them and I'm sending a text message. Oh, so, okay. Well, In addition to the stuff that we were talking about before I got on air. I see, you. I see. I'm like, I'm not, it's dead, period. No, everybody. Sit down. Everybody wants to be. Um, everybody wants to pretend like they are professional and you just got to leave me alone. It's like, no, you're doing this in the public, so therefore I'm, gonna, I'm going to talk about it. All right, look, so. I went at the University of Tulsa's football program with a scalpel on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Right. right? Some more on Saturday. Probably go at them a little bit today as well. Because people wanted to be like, yo, RJ, talk about TU. Cool. They finished 112th. And then I went at them like any national radio host might do for the Boston Celtics or mm-hmm. the Boston Red Sox. Because if you haven't been keeping up in this with this, and you wouldn't because you're not a baseball fan, but... Ooh, okay, go. Okay, what's the no, 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 go ahead. I, no. First what? of all, no, you're right. You don't even like to be, You don't like baseball. I'm not even arguing. That's with not you. news. I'm not even arguing with you. Of course, I don't like baseball. I try sometimes, but you know what? It's kind of boring. Anyway, so the people that are Tulsa fans, they hear you rip them up on, on the radio, and they say, "Hey, back off a little bit." It's not just that, right? It's not just that. That's that's a very small group of people, and quite frankly, it ain't big enough for me to even give a damn. Okay, I just, it's my university. Right, it's it's mine. Mm-hmm. Just like Oklahoma State's mine and OU is mine. No, you got you got it right. Right. So p- point being, I'm talking at every one of them, and I'm talking about look. You can develop or you cannot develop. Mm-hmm. All right. You can't tell me that stars don't matter, and then go out there and put out a piss poor product. Is that what they're saying? Stars, is that from what you're hearing from t- TU people? Locals. From everybody. From the University of Oklahoma fans. Mm. Want to tell me smart stars don't matter. While also I'm saying, look, recruit Oklahoma. Well, we can't recruit Oklahoma because they don't have stars. Don't stars matter or stars don't matter? Look, if you're going to suck, suck with my kids. Mm. All right? If you're not going to be very good, don't be very good with my kids. See, so Tulsa had been writing this this little bit of high of like we are the best worst team in, in football if – a couple of bounces went our way. We would have been um, a much a winning ball club. Uh, yeah, I guess. But I mean, at a certain point, you're just being a winning ball club. Like, it's, so if you say you're Oklahoma fans, they say stars don't matter, right? Um, if they don't yeah, matter, then if they why don't you matter. Think- why don't you have a like as as good as you are? Why don't you have a national championship? Right. So like, Clemson finishes number three in the, win. in the 2020 rankings. Yes. Okay. And the way I got there was like, nice lady by the name of Diana left a comment that normally I give a fist pound or I give a keg or give like a three word response because it's a lot of comments I'm trying to get to all. But she left a question that mm-hmm. just kind of sent me kind of into a place where I basically wrote her an essay. All right. And I answered her question, which was, can Oklahoma win with the 2020 class such as it is? It's ranked number 11. First time Oklahoma doesn't finish inside the top 10 since 2016 when they finished 19th. And Bob Stoops frankly stopped recruiting. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yes, they can, right? But it would have to be the way that Clemson did. Okay, Clemson did not have a top five class at all when it won the 2018 National Championship or Deshaun Watson's National Championship. Okay. They recruited as well as, well as they could and then overdeveloped. Like they hit on all four of their defensive linemen in that 2015 class, 2016 class, mm-hmm. right? Like Cleveland Farrell. Yeah, hit. They, they, they put in some work after the fact and got a little bit lucky. Isaiah Simmons. Mm-hmm. Hit. Three star, right? So they overdeveloped. If anything, they overachieved in 2018 and 2019, going 29 and 1 with lesser recruiting classes than Alabama, LSU, Ohio State, Duke. 
teams are all there. Yep. But on the flip side, you can't tell me that it doesn't matter because the teams that finished in the college football playoff, not named Oklahoma, all finished in the top five in the 2020 rankings of recruiting. Right. You can't be proud of being an outlier by saying that we've done good with what we've had. Isn't right. that enough? Well, especially if you're the brand that is Oklahoma, you're supposed to be winning national championships, not being there. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the point, right? If you're going to be relentless, be relentless. Don't tell me that Georgia has a bigger recruiting budget. They do, but Oklahoma has the third largest recruiting budget in college football. Right. This, so it's not really an excuse when it, from from your position. Right. If right. this was Nevada, you'd actually like if OU was Nevada, that would, that would be a an argument. But Oklahoma being Tulsa. the if you're Tulsa, definitely an argument. If you're Oklahoma and you are within spitting distance of Georgia Georgia's recruiting budget you would hopefully want to get Georgia's recruiting well, results. And, and you're also paying Georgia money to your head coach. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's, it's the same thing I would say with Texas. Like I made this upload about Oklahoma and Texas having an SEC football recruiting problem because yep. there've been, I, we call them recruiting national championships, right? Which means nothing except when you find out that Alabama's won eight of the last 10 and they won five of the last 10 national championships. Right. And it means nothing when Georgia has won two of the last three and they've been in the national uh, championship this decade, mm -hmm. right? Oklahoma has not. Yeah, this definitely looks like a haze of correlation really being causation. The last time Oklahoma had a top five recruiting class was 2010. Mm -hmm. I graduated college in 2010. I'm 32. I turned 33 this year. It's going to be me and Jesus. Oh, your skin's so smooth. Would not have guessed it. It ain't because I use lotion. Mm. It ain't. I, I figured, you know, I figured no, out why y'all can't get me to wear enough lotion. Sure, you want to out yourself out, out here being just sure because like everybody be on this, this chocolate skin man be with on no this channel be in the comments of the podcast about why your elbow so ashy. First of all, road rash. Okay, uh huh, road right. rash. Second of all, uh, I hate being greasy. I mm -hmm. hate it. Okay, like I had the 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 the, the yeah, I, I had lotion on and it was it was it made no, I felt awful. I've, I've fought you over the years about this and you know I'm I'm just the dude that's setting up the cameras and telling you what the aesthetic is. If I see it, the world sees it, I'm probably never gonna stop telling you to wear lotion, but I get it. One day it'll kick in, one day you'll change, one day you'll maybe you'll bump your head and speak French and also want to put on lotion, so we'll see. I get it. Yeah man, we got lights. What do you what do you, what else do you want? We got good lighting. We got better cameras. We got better microphones. I mean, I guess we could put up like some I was shouting into the phone and fine with that. Soundproofing, like it's maybe maybe put on some dynamat so that uh, we can put some subs in here. Subs. <laughs> so, I gotta find this audio of DJ Premier mm -hmm. talking about recording the Dr. Dre studio because it's epic. And one of the things that he had said was, "Look." We were working on this thing, and he says, hey, forget all that. We're doing Compton now. All right, whatever. Okay. So he goes to his house, and he said, look, I'm DJ Premier. I can handle loud music. I record everybody. When they're listening to their stuff, they, they hear it at max volume. When I tell you that my ears hurt, that will mean something to you, right? And Dre just kind of there. And he had, I forget what they call these subs, but it was the, these, like, super-duper expensive subwoofers. Mm -hmm. We're talking like twenty five, fifty thousand dollars, whatever. What what year were we like mid nineties? No, this is this is when Compton came out for NWA, the movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And you can't find them anymore, these woofers. Like you can't find them. Like mm -hmm. they just they're scarce. This dude would blow it out and they would like hit a button and another dude would just immediately appear with another one of these woofers to hook up. Mm. And that was when Premier was like I thought Dre had money, but I didn't know he had this kind of money. Mm. And it's like, you can hear that he gave money to USC and that'll hit you. And you'd be like, cool, a lot of people give money to schools. And you can hear that they have a new building for him and Jimmy that's, Iovine. That's what I was about to right? say. Right? And that'll hit you. But for me, for him, like for DJ Premier, it was that. It was that moment for which he was like, got all kinds of loot. And I, I don't know what to, what to do with my hands right now. Because I just watched the dude come out of here three times with the same subwoofer hooking oh, up. Oh yeah, no, like he, like, he just, like he just has a, a closet full of Rockford Files case that he just right. walks in and out of right. every time he every time he blows one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can't imagine that. But then again, that's Dre. I mean, he, so don't forget about him. Where I, 
<laughs> Where I was going with this, right, is one, you got enough money. Two, you don't have any excuses, right? Like when I tried out that with Clemson, Clemson, mm-hmm. Clemson, who is Clemson has been able to do over the last, not even decade, half decade. Yeah, no, they they, they burst on the scene. Half over OU's dead body, I might add, at the sweatpants bowl, 40 mm-hmm. to 6. Yep. Trevor Knight threw for 103 yards. Sounds about right, though. Right, right, right. And what you did was you hit on the dudes that you need to hit on, and you had one super duper change agent, right? Deshaun Watson, Trevor Lawrence. Mm-hmm. OU has had Baker Mayfield. We're going to throw Taj Boyd into the mix on that one? Taj Boyd ain't a change agent. Okay. Plus, he didn't win it. Okay. Like, I guess you could say he's a change agent. I mean, right? like, he, he's, right, he's, he's part Baker, of the... Would you you going to put Taj Boyd in the same category as Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, and Jalen Hurts? No. I. Not that I feel comfortable with, but put an asterisk next to his name whenever we're writing I, the book I about do, being I, change agents look, for Clemson. I do remember to, thinking Taj Boyd was gross, and then Deshaun Watson showed up. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's what's gross. Yes. And that's, okay, I get it. Like, as a precursor to what was to come, mm-hmm. sure. I, I'm just saying, I don't think you can leave him out of, Let me out put, of a conversation. Let me Taj Boyd to Kelly Bryant. I'm a, it's February, I'm picking Taj Boyd, but, it's, but I get it. You also hit on Kelly Bryant. Mm-hmm. Who's a three-star quarterback? Yeah, no. Okay, if if anything is that you've like and Lincoln Riley, Rogers. Link, like Lincoln Riley, hasn't missed the entire time. Right. You were hampered by a horrendously, historically bad defense, and I get that. But you know what? The dude that you had is at Clemson right now, mm-hmm. and all he's done since he got to Clemson is destroy whomever you put in front of him, not named LSU. And that LSU is the best football team of all time. Greatest of all time. Mm-hmm. Right. And even yeah. then, you know, we'll let it slide because mm-hmm. you're Clemson. You're not Georgia. You're not Alabama. You're not Florida. You're not Tennessee. Right. You're first, Clemson. First off, at, at least for two years, going one and one in the national championship, that's fine. I don't, I don't know anybody... I'm sure somebody is, but that's not any. The idea that you come out of an ACC that has been so watered down and so god awful, uh-huh. and still give the business to the class of the SEC in a way that Oklahoma simply cannot is the roaring indictment of OU football. Mm-hmm. All right, because like Larry Fedora's North Carolina went eleven and one in 2015. You know what they lost to Clemson. In the ACC championship game. And he lost by eight. Mm. It's like 45-37. Right? That same Clemson team loses by five to Alabama in the national championship game. That it, so, like, so, so it's like a, are you, are you leading to like a transitive property of ACC is at least this good? Or are you just saying that? No, I'm saying that. That Clemson. I'm saying, go ahead. Oh, the, so that Clemson is, uh what so much better than their conference that it's kind of a I don't know what you're saying go Ron, help me out here the ACC five signed five five stars mm-hmm. and I assume they all went to Clemson you're damn right mm-hmm. okay the Pac-12 signed four five stars three went to Oregon one went to Washington okay okay the Big Ten right Mm-hmm. Had three alone go to Ohio State. You know how many five stars signed in the entire league? Big 12? Five. One. Just one? One. 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 And you know where he went to school? Texas. Yes. You. We talked about B. John Robinson. Yeah. Right? It's him. Mm-hmm. Okay. I get there are 14 teams in the Big Ten. I get there are 10 in the Big 12. But I'm going to still throw this out here. The Big 12 signed 44 stars. 28 of those go to OU or Texas. The Big Ten signed 65. You know how many five stars Maryland signed? No. One. 
Okay. You know how many OU you sign? Zero. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, we we the math. We already did the math on that one. I can't. I can't help you if you if you if you believe that you don't need stars to win at the at the highest level, mm-hmm. national championship level. I can't help you if you don't believe that you have to overdevelop the talent that you do sign. I cannot help you, and if you don't believe that the children who grow up around your university are going to believe in what it means to play at your university a little bit more than somebody who grew up 900 miles away, I cannot help you. Right, because good ain't good enough. If if USC just signed a kiss from Los Angeles, <laughs> that's, that's a top five program, mm. right? We, the reason I say that is... We, because Oregon is doing that. Yeah, no, I, I was I was going to get there. But I would say if if absolutely if you could suck up all the talent in your metropolitan area, of course you would be good. And this is why I was going at TU's throat. Right, is the best player in the state of Oklahoma did not get an offer from the University of Tulsa. Signed with Oklahoma State. Mm-hmm. The best defensive player in the state of Oklahoma did not get an offer. From the University of Tulsa. His name is Reese Collier. He's going to walk on in North Texas. So nobody can complain if they're not putting in the work to... Like, if you don't even get a kid a, kid a phone call, you can't say that we're not, talent doesn't matter. We'll develop what you have. But what you've developed so far equals a five, six, seven, eight win season. And you keep going to Texas to get kids for Tulsa, which is fine, whatever. It's the third most talent-rich state in the union. But again... If you going to suck, suck with kids from here. Because mm-hmm. what we come to know is it ain't looking under rocks. They're right in front of you. Like there's a kid named Asher Link, right? Okay. That you probably haven't heard of because high school football. Went to Metro. Okay. Asher Link's quarterback. Asher Link put together a season of 5,394 yards. Say again. 5,394 yards for one dude. Mm. 73 touchdowns in one season. Okay. No, Played that's... both ways and was all state as a punter. <laughs> right, right, right. His, was his eight man? His, his, his Metro Patriots went 13 and 0, won a state championship, two way here. His offers were New Mexico, Air Force. And preferred walk on at Oklahoma State. Not even a look from Tulsa. Now with OU, at a larger level, you don't actually have to be held to the same standard, though I would and I have held you to the standard of you better win in state before you win anywhere else. Right. Because you go 12 and 2, 12 and 2, 12 and 2. But when you get on a national stage and you get embarrassed, yeah, I'm going to pull your card. Because it ain't that you lost to Georgia. It's that you gave up a 17-point lead. Mm-hmm. It ain't that you lost to Alabama. It's that they were up 28-0 to at the end of the first quarter. It ain't that you got beat like you stole something by LSU. It's that the game was 14-7 to in the first quarter and was 49-14 at half. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't get embarrassed and expect us to just be like, it's all right. No, like any, everything that you say that we are, the, everything that you are— uh this is what we believe in at what what do you say 49 14 at half has been a challenged and probably proved to be wrong so where do you go from here because you can't keep saying the same thing of we believe in what we're doing so i said that that ou was getting outworked mm-hmm. that the big 12 is getting outworked because the top 10 of the 2020 rankings shows seven sec teams one of which is tennessee and they ain't went nothing last year Okay, it shows the top five have three SEC teams in it. Mm-hmm. It shows Arkansas, who went two and ten last year, finished number thirty in the ranking. You know where Oklahoma State finishes? What's that? Forty fifth. Mm. The fourth best recruiting team in the SEC is A and M. They finished fourth in the SEC. They finished sixth nationally. The fourth best recruiting team in the Big Twelve is Oklahoma State. They finished forty fifth nationally. TCU finished third at 28th. Texas finished first at nine. 
This, this reminds me of, a, of an argument we had not too long ago about Nick Saban ruining the SEC and kind of sort of college football in that how he stacked talent for his team or better he was able to accumulate talent like UConn women's basketball and that everybody needed to follow that lead as opposed to developing that or being creative in the in the in your playbook uh I think this is now the uh we're we're, we're now post that and still ruined but now everybody's uh playing as if just trying to not get embarrassed. I don't know if everybody's going for a national championship now. I don't I don't I don't know if if they're actually putting in the effort to be anything other than a one or two loss team.